Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America. I'm Walter Zagarevich, and shortly I will be presenting to you a very special guest who's been on here very often, every week almost, uh, Sister Marcy Lobaki. And before we go any further, would you please take a moment to invite your friends, invite your loved ones to the broadcast. Tell them Prayer for America is on right now. Share this on your Facebook profile. Just find that little button that says share. And if you press that, it will be shared on your feed so that your friends, your loved ones will be able to join you as you participate in this broadcast. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm excited about what God is going to do. God answers prayer. God is has not changed. His power has not diminished. His ability has not changed. And though we may think he's slow in responding, yet God's timing is always perfect. It may not seem that way to us when we're going through situations, but God is working. And so keep believing, keep trusting, and Jesus Christ will make things happen in your life. But you've got to commit your life to him. You've got to commit your plans to him. Sister Marcy, welcome. God richly bless you. Would you greet the people? I greet you all in the name of the Lord, and uh, we're looking forward to a great program. So invite your friends and uh, settle down for a while if you can. And if you can't, uh, then do this, uh, review this program over and over again so that you get what God is saying to you. And, and, and like Brother Walter said, believe. Believe God and believe his word. If you don't believe, you wouldn't be saved. You remember, you have to believe that Jesus died for you. You have to believe that he loves you. You have to believe that when you confess him as your Lord and Savior, he will come into your heart and life and you will be a Christian. You believed it. Now continue to believe. Continue to believe God's word. Today, God wants to change your life, change your hope, change your vision, change everything around you. Mary believed. And she changed the whole world because, because she said, Lord, be it unto me, even as you said. She believed. Believing changed her life, her family, her fiancé, changed the whole world. Everyone who believed Abraham believed, and he changed the world. You start believing, and you will be an instrument of change to this world in the name of Jesus. Absolutely. Amen to that. And before we go any further again, please take a moment to share, text, call, whatever you have to do. Get your friends on right now. This is going to be power packed. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Marcy here in just a moment. But once again, share this, share this. And let's continue to believe. Let's continue to trust. We're not only getting prayer requests, we're also getting testimonies of healing. Thank you for joining us in prayer for different ones around the world. God is answering prayer. People are getting better. People have been healed, uh, uh, answer to prayer needs and requests. So let's keep trusting God. Amen. Sister Marcy, uh, go ahead. Yes, praise the Lord. I believe that the Lord said so loudly in my spirit, been saying that for weeks now, and the Lord said, today is it. God says, I am going to change things around, but I need you, the church, to cooperate because we are his body. He's the head. The head doesn't walk by itself. The head doesn't lay hands on the sick. The head doesn't do all those things. The head needs the body. And the Lord needs us, the church, to rise up and not to just give up and say, okay, since they decided this in Washington, I guess it's just hopeless. I guess we just complain. I guess we just get angry. I guess we just get upset. That's not what the Lord wants the church to do. God wants the church to rise up and be the church, be the body of Christ. 
Do what Jesus would do. And so I titled this little study, word, word study here, how do I finish this race that I have started? We started a race and then all of a sudden, after about halfway through, like Israel, we're getting tired. We're getting hopeless. We're kind of losing our vision. We're losing our hope. We're losing our faith and our trust that the Lord said, and he meant what he said, that he gave us promises that will take us to the end, that will take us through victoriously through. And so we don't want to stop in the middle of the wilderness and die in the sands of that wilderness. No, we want to go all the way through and be that glorious church. He didn't say you're going to be a glorious church just when the devil lays down and just doesn't speak another word and doesn't resist you. He didn't say that. He said you will be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle in it or any such thing. It, he never gave us any timing on it. He never said only what is going good. No. Now is the time, I believe, for us to arise and to fulfill that word. So I have a few points. And if you have a pen and paper, write them down. If you don't right now, you can't because you're driving and you put this on the somewhere in your car and you're listening or whatever it is that you're doing you're walking and you're listening that's fine replay it just replay it over and over again replay this program on, on facebook live or on facebook and 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 see what god is saying and begin to write it down get yourself comfortable and begin to write it down and review it and ask the holy spirit to teach you beyond our teaching because that's what he'll do we teach something and then god takes you even beyond that and gives you revelation knowledge and so let's start with point number one how to finish this race how to finish the course that is assigned to us number one look to the lord but they that wait upon the lord not upon man not upon the government, not about, upon the rulers of this world, not upon your own ability, your own strength, your own wisdom. Wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But I wanted to read the pretext to that text. And in Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31, write it down. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. He said, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not he does god god is not fainting god is not scared of anything that's happening today neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding verse 29 he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength wow that is awesome this word is an everlasting word and is the same today as it was long time ago and it will still be the same after we are all gone and it says here verse 30 even the youth shall faint and shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength. Not everybody will re renew their strength, but those who wait upon the Lord, mark that down. Wait upon the Lord. Just say, God is for me. God is for me. He will strengthen me. He will help me. And then look to the Lord. Secondly, remember that God is with you. Isaiah 41, just now, verses 10 to verse 18. Uh, it's a long uh, portion of scripture. I'll just read verse 10. And then you read all the rest of it. It is very, very powerful. Fear thou not, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. You know, God says, 
as long as I'm with you, don't, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Whoever comes up against you, there's nothing that can be greater than God. When God is with us, nothing, 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 nothing on this earth can stop us. Nothing can harm us. He said, just don't be afraid because I'm with you. Whatever needs to be handled, I will. And to, to Abraham, he said, and to Moses, he said, he said, who are you? What, what am I going to tell Israel? And, and, and God said, tell him, I am. I am the, the, the one who will fix things for you. I am the great physician. I'm the great healer. I'm the great deliverer. I am the highway maker through this through the wilderness and through the Red Sea. I am anything. You need bread. I am bread. You need more gasoline in your car. I am. You need help. I am. You need more money. I am. I am. I am. I am everything you need. And if you have this, I am with you. Now tell me how you're going to fail. You're not. Just keep, just remember, he is not leaving you. If you didn't leave him, he will never leave you. He said, be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, verse 11, mark that down, read it over and over, especially in these days. I believe this applies to today, what we're going through. In verse 11, he said, behold, all they that were incensed against thee, they were angry with you. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. What a God we serve. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, that uh, they that war against thee shall be. You see, we're, there's a war against the church nowadays. We are the church. He's talking to us. And he says, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. He, he, he repeats them. He repeats in double negatives. And he says, they shall be nothing and the thing of naught. And he said, for I am the Lord thy God. I'm your God. The devil is not your God. The evil one is not your God. Your enemies are not your God. Remember that. He said, I am your God. I will hold your right hand. I'm saying to you, fear not. I will help you. Fear not. He called him thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help you, saith the Lord, and thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the holy one of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. You will become a sharp instrument. Having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, those things that look too big for us. They're too high. They're too lofty. They're too impossible. And God says, I will make you a sharp, threshing instrument. Oh, hallelujah. And thou shalt thresh the mountains. You will beat them, on, you will beat them small, and you shall make the hills as chaff. Oh, continue to read until verse 18. It is so powerful. He said, I will open rivers in high places. People who are thirsty for the living waters, I will make rivers for them. I will make, I'll bring water and you'll be able to, to, to grant them to them. Listen, here's some water. Come to the Lord. Drink of this well. Bring them to the well. Hallelujah. Where Jesus is sitting on the well. Bring them to that well and let them drink living waters. God wants to use you in these last days. Don't look at the negative. Don't look at the devil. You know, do you realize do I realize, do we realize, I have to again and again remind ourselves, why are we letting the one who is under our feet boss us around? You tell me, please tell me why. Why? The Lord asked us, and he said, why are you letting the one who is underneath your feet, because you're the body of Christ, 
He's not even even with us. He's not even level under, with our eyes, looking into his eyes. He is not. He's way underneath your feet. And you're letting that one defeat you and boss you around and tell you what's going to happen to you. Listen to the Lord. He's telling you what's going to happen to you. He said, I am with you. You are my body. Amen. And you will not be defeated. Brother Walter. Amen. Praise God. So powerful. And if you missed it or caught onto it a little late, go back and listen to it. As soon as the broadcast is over, you can rewind it. Go back and listen to it. Very, very powerful, very encouraging. And, uh, you know, Sister Marcy, what happens is uh, people read the news and the news are things that already happened, uh, is in uh, but it there the way they're written often is to create emotion to create reaction and we get upset over something that already happened whereas we as believers can affect the future we can live in the now and we can um, thrust forward into the future because uh, we could either read the news or make the news, so to speak. Amen. And uh, how uh, we could do that is by trusting God's word and mm -hmm. exercising our spiritual authority we have in Christ. How is it that the one who's under the feet of Jesus, under our feet, because we are in Christ, we are the body of Christ, how is it that he seems to be triumphing? Well, uh, a lot of that is projection. A lot of that is uh, uh, propaganda, shall we say. And yes, the devil has been doing things. But uh, as Sister Marcy has said, let's not get our eyes off of the Lord and the fact that we can do all things through him, the fact that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, and that a lot of what the devil does oftentimes is a bluff. A lot of times it's uh, to put fear, to make us, uh, to paralyze us in our faith so that we would take our trust away from God, away from our Savior, Jesus Christ, and begin to doubt him, begin to doubt his power, begin to doubt his ability. I mean, it's just the devil's old trick, back to Eve. Did God oh. say? You know? uh, uh, so that's the way the devil comes. Did God really say that? I mean, do you? he tries to put doubt in our hearts concerning what God has said. And God has said so many things, and God's word is true. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And so when you know Christ, you know truth. He is the truth. Uh, and, uh, and God is perfect. There is no variation. There is no shadow of turning in him. He is a perfect God. He is an awesome God, and uh, he is absolutely good to us. Amen. Amen. Not just good, but absolutely good. Um, there is no um, question as to the goodness of God. Uh, Sister Marcy, let's pray for people out there because uh, unfortunately we do live in a fallen world. And unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of news that is uh, broadcast and streamed. And it's sort of like the prophets of Baal, uh, some of these people just prophesying evil, prophesying or speaking so many bad things, and yet we can counteract that by prophesying or speaking what God, God's word says, uh, and, and that's the report that we believe. Whose report will you believe, Isaiah said? Yeah. We will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. So let's pray. Would you pray for people who may be discouraged, may be um, facing things that just did not make, uh, um, are, are, are maybe they're not making sense, but it's worse than that. They're just not what they thought they should be right now because they have been praying, they have been faithful to God, and yet things uh, seem uh, bleak to them right now. Would you pray for those people right now, Sister Marcy, please? Lord, we just thank you that you are the creator of heaven and earth. And therefore, heaven and earth is subject, totally subject to you and to your word. 
and we're the body of Christ. And that is all subject to how we also see our authority to bind that which needs to be bound and loose that which needs to be loose. And you taught us, Lord, that we should loose those things that are loosed in heaven already and health and strength and guidance and peace and joy and liberty is loosed in heaven. And Lord, what is bound in heaven is the devil on all and all his works, sickness, disease, discouragement, frustration, uh, walls that we can't uh, can't climb over and things that look so impossible and, and discouragement all along, all along the way. Lord, these things, we bind them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we command them to be to be bound and to be cast away from these people and taken off out of their pathway so they can continue on the pathway lord that you are leading them and we thank you lord that every star that you put in heaven you put it in the right place in a, into a very strategic place so that every star is 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 the most valuable to the earth to light up the world and lord we pray for these people all the body of christ every member of the body of christ they are the stars that you have created so that they would be the light of the world you said matthew 5 14 that we are the light of the world because you live in us and so you are the light and we become the light because we we are your body and we just pray that everyone <clears throat> every star that you have created every human being every member of the body of christ that they will accept their place where you have placed them in the strategic place not to complain about the darkness but to see how they can shine and the darkness disappears darkness cannot rule over light light rules over darkness dark the light came and the bible says that the darkness could not overcome the light that came which was jesus hallelujah and jesus lives in us and in the name of jesus that every christian brother and sister realize that you the light of the world lives in them and wherever there's darkness wherever there's uh, horrible things discouragement you are the light and that darkness must leave and that discouragement must leave because it only belongs to the kingdom of darkness. And when light comes in, darkness is defeated. In Jesus' name, touch those who are sick and heal them. Touch those who are discouraged and encourage them more. Touch those who are weak and grant them the strength that they will mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint lord show those that feel like they don't know the way they don't know which way to turn which way to go show them lord the way which is you you are the way the truth and the life you are our shepherd and we shall not lack and we shall not want. We thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Father, we bring those prayer requests that have been sent in from people around the world, from Nepal, from India, from Pakistan, from uh, Ukraine, Russia, from, uh, from here in the United States, from Canada, from Cuba, other parts of the world. Father, we send your word out to those who are in need of healing right now. We pray for Brother Andre, who had been uh, uh, operated yesterday, uh, open heart surgery. We pray for healing for him in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we pray for Sister Monica that you would touch her her right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for other needs, and uh, we thank you for the recovery of uh, uh, Brother Albert's family. We pray for full and complete strength and healing in their bodies, every one of them, in Jesus' yes. name. And Lord God, we thank you that you have answered prayer. They are stronger. They are strong now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for others that uh, 
have been healed. And Lord, there are many who are in need of a touch right now, some suffering with COVID, some suffering with colds and flus and uh, viruses, and some suffering from uh, debilitating diseases. But there is no disease that can match the name of Jesus for in that name there is power, and in that name we command and expel every sickness, every pain. Leave in Jesus' name right now, and healing come forth in the name of Jesus Christ. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ flow into your body right now, touching you, expelling every trace of that virus, every trace of that flu bug, every trace of sickness in your body and weakness and healing come forth in Jesus' name, in those uh, limbs, in those knees, in those ankles, in those shoulders, in that neck, in that back, in the heart, in the lungs, in the liver, in the kidneys, the stomach, the throat, nose, uh, ears, be healed. Eyes, be healed in Jesus' name right now. Oh, I sense the power of God. I sense God is moving. I sense God is touching right now. And wherever you may be at, the Lord is touching you right now. You who are at the sound of my voice, receive your healing right now. Just begin to thank God and say, Lord, I receive my healing. I am healed by the stripes, the wounds, the suffering of Jesus Christ. I receive that healing, and I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Release your faith now. Try to do what you could not do. Jesus Christ has touched you. Believe that. Um, Lord, we also send your word there to Pastor Deepak's dad with the bad asthma attack. We speak healing over him and others around the world who may be suffering from asthma. We rebuke that asthma. We command their body to be healed. Sister Nadja, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Father, we pray for the Afghan church, that you would protect them, that you would use them, that you would embolden them in this hour and use them in Jesus' name, protect them, provide for them. And Lord, not only the Afghan church, but the church worldwide, the church in uh, areas of persecution, in India, in Nepal, in China, oh God, even uh, in Canada, and, and even in parts of America, in Cuba. Lord, we pray for the persecuted church. Father, may the church arise. Parts of Russia, too. Father, may the church be protected. May they be used. May they be empowered as your glorious church to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we not be on the defensive, but on the offensive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Um, praise God. Sister Marcy, I just sense God is, uh, God's power is been, has been released. People are being touched. People are being healed. People are being encouraged. And uh, uh, again, if you miss what Sister Marcy shared earlier in the broadcast, go back and listen to that. Very important because you need to hear this word. Um, there's so much negativity. There's so much uh, um, that is uh, caused to discourage people. And instead of being discouraged, listen to what God says about you, what God says you can do in Christ, and that will empower you. That'll give you a different Amen. outlook on the situation you're in right now. Um, Sister Marcy, uh, there are people that someone may have thinking by accident that they've uh, logged in here, and uh, they may not know Jesus as their Savior. Would you lead to such a person or persons to Christ uh, right now? Just pray this prayer as you have been listening to the word, listening to us, uh, speaking about the Lord, how good he is. He loves you. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, they should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you know, we were just talking, I was talking this morning with my husband and I said, you know, some people, you see how they're just running around and, and flirting with the devil and flirting with everything else and living such an ungodly life. 
And when you look at them, you think, oh, my God, how can God love them? Then I said, you know how God loves them? Just like we love our children. If our children started to do something wrong, you would still look at your child and see your image in them. And you would say, oh, I love her. I love him. I want to help them to straighten out. That's how God is. You, you just maybe went off the tracks and you're, you're not serving him. And God is looking at you and you are his child. And he is such a loving heavenly father. If we love our children that much, how about God? He loves us and he loves those that are astray. Those who have not even confessed him as Lord. Those who just didn't know about him. But he looks at you and he sees his image in you. You know that? Because he created you in his image. And in his likeness. And he sees his image in you. And he's like, that's my child. I need them. I need them to accept what I did on the cross. I paid the price. Here's the receipt. Here, get this eternal life for free. It's free. Just receive him. And so right now, bow your head and just say these words. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to save my soul. I ask you to cleanse me from all my unrighteousness and all my sins. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart, into my life by the power of the Holy Spirit and make me a new creation. And I will serve you the rest of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, do three things every day. Talk to God. Prayer is what we call uh, call it, but it's talking with God, telling him what is on your heart, not just a learned prayer, but something from your heart. Talk to him. You don't know how to say good morning, Lord, help me today. And each time you pray, you will learn to talk more and more with Jesus. And number two, allow him to speak to you by reading his word, the Bible, Number three, tell others Jesus is your Lord, is your Savior, and find a Bible-believing church where you can grow in your faith. If you can't find one near you, write us. We'll try to locate one nearest to you that we could uh, uh, put you in contact with. God bless you. Well, Sister Marcy, thank you so much for joining me today. And before we close, we want to pray for America and the nations. And um, I just want to mention those of you that are in the Sacramento area or will be in the uh, Sacramento area this Sunday, the 26th of September, Nina and I will be ministering at Bethany uh, Slavic Missionary Church on Jackson Highway in Sacramento. So we will be at Bethany Church this Sunday at 12 noon, the English service at 12 noon is the Slavic church, but at 12 noon, there's an English service, and we had a powerful time last time we ministered there on the 4th of July, and we look forward to seeing you in person this Sunday at 12 noon at uh, Bethany Slavic Missionary Church here in Sacramento. So uh, do join us and uh, expect God to work a miracle in your life. So if you have a need, you have a prayer need, you want pr us to lay hands on you, do come to this minist uh, minist uh, to this uh, church for ministry this Sunday at 12 noon. Um, but Sister Marcy, we call this Prayer for America. Would you lead us in a prayer for America and the nations as the Lord leads you? Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your power in our lives and for promising us that you will never, never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, we just thank you that you are with each and every believer and that we're standing on your word and we believe you, we trust you, and we just pray for our nation. Dear God in heaven, help. Uh, Lord, um, awaken the Christians to rise up and to be the light that they're called to be. And the light will dissipate the darkness. We 
have to believe this. We need to believe this. This is the truth. We've been believing something other than truth till now. And it seems like the devil has been running roughshod over us. But that is the wrong thing to do because he is under our feet. And we command in the name of Jesus that every Christian would have that revelation knowledge by the power of the Holy Spirit throughout our nation and in fact throughout the earth, throughout the whole world, Lord, that there will be a wave of the glory glory of God showing that who they are in Christ and they are the light. They are not the darkness. They are the light and the darkness will dissipate whenever you turn the light on. And we just pray that every Christian will turn their lights on. They will be the stars they were meant to be. They will shine and they will stay in a position you put them so that they could be the light there and, and, and spread that light and show others how great our God is in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen, amen. And Lord, we thank you for revival that is coming to this nation, to Canada, to the nations in the Caribbean and the nations in Central and South America, to Europe and Asia and Africa, the South Pacific. Lord, we thank you that no one will escape escape uh, the effects of the revival that is coming. No one will be immune to that revival. You are getting ready to do something mighty, and we want to be ready and a part of that. We want to be used of you to touch the nations of the world. And Lord, we just thank you that you are always with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't look at how big the problem is. Look at how big your God is. He is much bigger than any need, than any sickness, than any problem. And you have him living inside of you. Be encouraged and share this broadcast to encourage other people so that they too may hear some good news and some encouraging news. So thank you for joining us today. Share this with your friends and loved ones. And Sister Marcy, thank you for being on today. God richly bless you. Amen.